Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for sticking around for so long. And um, I'm going to try to be quick and respect your time as we go through this. Um, I don't know about you, but my synapses have been firing uh, as well, uh, to take Abigail's phrase. And a lot of what you're going to see in today's presentation, uh, you'll, you'll recognize some trends. But what I wanted to do today in the, in the limited time that I have was share seven different things uh, that we have learned and observed as a, as a large publisher. And then more importantly, I want to share with you what we're doing about it, because I think, um, you know, to be candid, nobody has the right answers in uh, mobile, whether it's mobile marketing, mobile publishing, uh, mobile e-commerce. And I think uh, sharing uh, these kind of learnings is uh, where we go. Um, but this is kind of uh, how I suspect many publishers feel every day. I wake up literally thinking about what I'm going to do with mobile every day. And there's a reason for that, and, and I want to give you the seven kind of observations as to why I think we kind of feel this way. One, Michael, uh, just a few moments ago, dialed into this. It's, it's a completely different habit that we're experiencing. And in media, if you think about habits, that's what has driven our business. So the habit of turning on a television, picking up a paper, and so forth. Now this habit that we know, which is the checking the phones, you know, 150 uh, times, and I think that's a low number, actually. You all <clears throat> would probably agree creates a completely different phenomena and a, a completely different outcome when you think about product development. And it starts going to this issue of what is important. And it's no longer the case in media that what is important is what is important. All right, And I intentionally said it that way because we think as media companies that what the most important thing is what's important. When you have a habit which involves taking a phone out of your pocket 150 times to you know, 350 times a day, the most important thing is what's new. Okay, so I, I, I like this little phrase, I'm going to trademark it, new is the new news. Uh, and if you look at all of the successful applications as, and, and why people are using and checking uh, something all that time, they want that uh, emotional payoff which is, uh, which is engendered by giving me something new all the time. Michael also touched on this, mobile doesn't mean mobile anymore. So mobile could mean that you're at your home and PlayStation. Uh, and I think this is a really important um, number four on my list is a really important observation for us, which is uh, the personalization element. If you really stop and look at um, what has happened with these mobile devices, and I heard several times the word supercomputer, people are no longer using these as media devices or watching devices. The, the, the power in this is all the different types of things that you can do. So it's no longer these form factors that were media form factors, whether it's a print magazine and so forth. It's that now you have these devices that allow you to do um, so many different things within there. There's an important uh, element to all of this. This is the most personal device that has ever been invented in the history of mankind. And it serves the purpose of I and the id. And so if you're not developing applications or as a brand speaking to people in ways that um, uh, apply to the id, uh, you're really not, you're really missing the point, okay? Number five, uh, mobile applications and mobile uh, product development is now and must now deliver a completely different payoff. So it used to be that we could uh, stand on our laurels as media companies and say we're informing you if we're a news organization or if we're, you know, the MBA, we're entertaining you. Um, the types of payoffs that you need to get right now with a mobile uh, device, a mobile application, when you're taking the phone out of your pocket and checking it so, in, in, so incessantly um, are completely different. Is anyone familiar with this book at all, The $100 Startup? Uh, I highly recommend it to you, uh, but I, the phrase that I, I like to use and, and we use in our product development group is that honing in on cu what customers want is critical. And in particular, we want more of some things and less of others. So what does that look like when you think about product development through a more or less uh, prism, and, and particularly in mobile? If you can't answer a question that, that, that uh, is asked about what your mobile application delivers, if it doesn't deliver more of something good and less of something bad, you don't have a, you don't have a viable product uh, in mobile. This is an interesting constraint that we have been uh, using as we uh, develop mobile applications and move forward. Uh, this one uh, is probably obvious to everyone in this room. It's not so obvious within legacy organizations. Uh, it's no longer that we're competing against uh, our traditional competitors. It really is everybody. Uh, 
Uh, and the last uh, observation before I go into what we're actually doing about it uh, is really about recognizing that the old ways uh, won't work. And again, I don't need to sell this group on that, um, but you know, this is the typical uh, banner ad, as we've seen. I actually uh, would disagree a little bit, I think, with Troy in that last uh, panel, uh, talking about the intimacy of this type of advertising. Um, I'm not sure that, that the intimacy of that overcomes the uh, epic failure of that as a strategy. So uh, that's something you could tweet if you wanted to tweet that and get Troy upset. <laughs> so those are kind of the seven lessons uh, that uh, we have in observations and how we're thinking about our, our product development. Uh, more importantly, uh, what are you going to do about it? Uh, and here again, I just like GIFs, so I, I wanted to find a way to put that in there. Uh, there are really uh, four areas that I wanted to talk about today and how we're thinking about it, how we're re-engineering re, uh, our company to be a mobile first strategy. By the way, our traffic right now at USA Today, just to take one property, is 65% mobile. So if you wonder why I'm not sleeping, uh, it's because the revenue associated with that is significantly uh, less than where we are. Um, and so we're spending a lot of time trying to figure out how to re-engineer the organization around that. So most importantly, or maybe not most importantly, or one important element is probably a better way to put it, uh, really understanding the back end and creating tools and services for your employees to create great mobile products is critical. So what does that look like? On the left uh, hand side is a content management system we have engineered um, uh, for the Gannett company that allows you to program devices specifically. So no longer is it really acceptable to have an automated feed, which is how we've been doing it in the news business, of stuff coming from your website. So having that uh, set of tool sets and on the right hand side, having the visibility of all the content across the company so you can manipulate that is a critical uh, part of engineering your organization. This is tricky business. Uh, it is thankless business, um, but, I, but I think it's a critical uh, piece of it. From a product perspective, um, again, this notion that what is new is the most important thing. Uh, I call this uh, uh, strategy that, that both email and Facebook and any alerting system has identified kind of the popping the zit phenomena. So whenever you open your phone, you have that red dot and you want to find out how many updates you've got and you want to clear those updates off your screen. Uh, this whole notion of alerting people on what's new and then, and then delivering content organized by what is new uh, is, a, uh, is part of our mobile reengineering effort. Uh, and then, as importantly to the discussion, uh, one of the things that we um, uh, challenged ourselves to identify was how can we add more personality to our applications? Because if you, if you really think about this phenomenon of, of pulling out the device and what kind of emotional payoff uh, you have to have, and what applications are really resonating with people when they have 30 seconds of time or 45 seconds of time, all of these applications, whether it's Twitter, Snapchat, uh, or, you know, Facebook, uh, deliver an emotion to it. And there's an important qualification to that, which is that everybody's device and everybody's version of these applications is different. And so again, it's tailored back to that id or that i, uh, that I piece. So in our applications, uh, if you're going to deliver on that id, id uh, uh, payoff, if you will, You've got to have a series of things uh, from personalization to recognition to encouragement. So if you see um, anybody have Fitbit in here, I know we all have Nike Fuels, but you know, Fitbit was really the first one to give that kind of encouragement uh, and recognition, that way to go uh, type of thing. But you, you also have to really check yourself on whether you're delivering some of these other uh, emotive uh, paybacks. Uh, and again, so uh, if you can imagine being inside a 108-year-old news organization, these are things that, that have never been a part of the core culture, uh, but now have to be part of the culture in order to deliver on that type of behavior and upon that type of habit set that we've seen. From a sales uh, perspective, uh, it's always best, I think, to look at the leader in the clubhouse and see what they're doing. Facebook, quite frankly, is the only one amongst us who is killing it right now in terms of mobile uh, advertising revenue. Uh, so I think it's important to take uh, you know, a look at what they're doing and why they're doing it. Two, two quick observations, of course. Uh, native advertising for Facebook has always been their core bread and butter. So ads that are integrated into the uh, content flow have the same uh, fonts, 
presentation, card style, asset views, uh, has been a successful part uh, of a Facebook strategy. You'll never see a banner uh, on Facebook, and there's the company that's taking 45% of the mobile revenue out of the marketplace. So we think from a sales uh, perspective, that's going to be important. Obviously, these ads are, are going to become more sophisticated. We have done a partnership with a company that we own called Point Roll with Facebook to make the ads a little bit more engaging. Uh, of course, you know, that's one phase of it. The next phase of it, as we know, we've read about this, is that video ads are coming into your news feed soon. Uh, so stay tuned for that as a, as, a, as a marketing platform. But what you're seeing basically throughout all of the things um, that, is, that, is, that are working well, I think, in mobile is this integration of advertising into the flow. And, and I borrowed this from Pam uh, Haran's deck, uh, the definition of native advertising. I, th I feel like there are a couple of key words in here that really apply to mobile and why we need to architect our products uh, in this particular way. First, integration into the design. So that's an important part. So I'm stepping away from what are traditionally called advertorials or sponsored content, but just really that simple integration into the design. And it must run within the editorial stream for, um, for it to be effective. There's a third element to this, though, that I think that shouldn't be lost, which is the integration of the ad into the operating system of the phone, or the marketing message. You know, I don't want to just call it an ad, but the marketing message into the phone. And I, th and I feel like um, yesterday when we saw those pictures of uh, the Pope that uh, Luis put up and you know, the, everybody had their phone up, you, know, you can really let your mind run about how marketing messages are going to tie into that when everybody can contribute those assets. But this integration of all of the ad elements uh, with the integration of the phone operating system I think is going to be an important trend to watch and is something that we're trying to do as we develop uh, new ad products is think about how each one of those products would integrate um, into the phone operating system as well. I won't belabor this one, but uh, a slightly different take on what Michael Zimbalist was talking about, how mobile is just one part of a uh, cross-platform strategy. You know, we've been looking at synchronization of video ads across uh, all these different devices. Um, creating uh, ad experiences that are common across all of, all of the devices and so forth is an important part of that, um, that strategy and where we're going. And then from, the, from a, from a long-term perspective, I want to come back to that slide I had just a minute ago about all the different things that you can do with the phone because I think uh, everything I've told you so far, at least on the sales side, are stuff we can kind of intuit and see where we are. But I really think there's uh, a much larger uh, uh, set of issues or things that need to be solved here. And, and you're kind of hearing around the edges here, but I look at it this way, which is that I am of different value to different people at different times, different locations, and different state of minds. And this notion of personalization as it relates to advertising and context and environment, uh, I don't think anybody has uh, at least articulated a way to, to move us down this direction. So, I will use the Lumascape thing again because I think if, if we're honest about this and where this goes, this is kind of what it looks like now. As a, as a publisher, we really wish it looked like this, right? That we controlled, we were kind of this barrier, if you will, between the, the marketer and the consumer. We know that, the, that this is not really the way the landscape uh, is working or will ever work given the direct touch points. You talked about Nike today and uh, Walmart and so forth, having those direct uh, um, interactions. But I think what we are interested in is are there ways to think about this where we actually can be a gatekeeper to an audience where we actually pay people, for instance, to take our applications because we have such great insight and first party data associated with, with that. And that the, uh, the value propositions as they relate and change between uh, uh, the companies go forward. There's a company called JANA. Has anybody heard of JANA? Some really smart engineers. I think they're out of uh, Boston. I bet, you, I bet you Bob Davis has an investment with them. Uh, they're doing a really interesting thing uh, that, again, I think uh, is prescient around how uh, advertising and this relationship between marketers and publishers and, is, is going to change. But right now, what they will do is they will pay consumers with uh, airtime. So this is really big in uh, uh, a number of companies like uh, India and, and in Africa. Uh, where they will install airtime on your phone in exchange for taking a survey or a consumer survey. So I think actually Unilever, who was presenting uh, the other day, is one of their, their, their key case studies. 
But changing this relationship and how we actually uh, participate in this, I think, is a, is a big development. And the last one is this notion of uh, renting your time. Uh, because again, I'm of different value to different, uh, different marketers at different time, but renting my time and value uh, uh, in exchange for, um, for that attention. The last thing I want to leave you with uh, is uh, one, one last thing that we're really thinking hard about doing uh, and that I think is really interesting. And, and if, if Jeff Bezos buying the Washington Post doesn't um, uh, fire a synapse in, in your mind, uh, this is the one it fired in mine. Um, if, if we're right about what he's going to do, he's probably going to subsidize, uh, which he doesn't even need to subsidize, the Kindle Fire with a subscription of the paper. So really take the mobile model of um, uh, hardware for free with a subscription. So just like your cell phone is subsidized by AT&T, uh, and I'll package that with a subscription. So if I get a two-year subscription to the Washington Post, I get my new Kindle Fire for free. Presumably in two years I get an update, and that they can make that math work uh, going forward. So this is something for us that's really important to watch in the uh, mobile landscape for a uh, product sales um, you know, and distribution strategy for, um, for big publishers. So with that, I'm going to pass the baton, and uh, thank you all for your time today. Appreciate it.